Hi everyone, it's Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA here. So now I'm really going to go over the Q&A feature and I want to go into it quite in depth showing you a number of different examples because it is so amazing, it is seriously amazing and I don't feel it's probably utilised as much as it, it can be although, although there isn't the realisation out there how good it actually is. Now a lot of improvements have gone into it recently so uh, really this is just you know to showcase what you can achieve now as uh, in terms of where it's at. Uh, uh, within within Power BI and the online service. Now, I actually yeah, recently I went through a uh, we went through the learning summit, and many of you who are watching this video probably uh, were on the summit, and we actually had a bit of an issue uh, in the last session, and when I was trying to showcase Q and A, and that was because uh, at the time, and I, I don't know if this is a recent change or not, um, but. I was using, I was showcasing row level security and I was trying to then jump in and showcase the Q&A and I didn't realize that when you have row level security on inside of your reports, it does, the Q&A doesn't actually work. So uh, it's not something that I've actually combined in any real world um, uh, scenario myself, so I didn't actually realize at the time, but, um, but was made aware of it later on uh, dur during that session. Now this is just uh, an opportunity to pick up where where we left off really at that time um, and to actually really spend a bit of time showcasing the Q&A because as I say there's so much you can do there. Now we've got a pretty detailed report here and I always say with, with Q&A the, the, the key thing to note is that Q&A will just not work if your model is not built well. So that's really the key. That's really one of the keys to actually get it working well. Um, and there's just no way around it. The power, the, it's not smart enough to just be able to read your data and and um, you know just know stuff. You need to name things well. You need to have good measures uh, that are also named well. That are that are you know calculations or optimized, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it is amazing. Once you do that, it's amazing what you can achieve. Now. It is kind of, uh, I am sort of debating around like how do you actually utilize the dashboards now because there's so many features inside of just the reports. Why even use dashboards? And so what I've been playing around with is as I actually feel, and this is some of my latest thinking, I actually feel that the Q&A is basically the key part of a dashboard now. Um, because there's no point in my view in a lot of cases to place the, a lot of these visualizations inside of a dashboard when you can just make your report like a dashboard and utilize bookmarks and, and a whole raft of different uh, features that we now have available inside um, inside of here. So I have been playing around, so in this case, I've just put an image here and this way I can actually, I, I can still sort of move in between different reports. I think that's still um, still a good feature. It's a good way to sort of dynamically jump between one report and another report, etc. But mainly I feel like the best way to utilize dashboards is seriously just because of the Q&A feature. Now the Q&A feature does have one big downside. The biggest downside is the colors. So I've obviously, I spend a lot of time making colors look good in my reports, but in Unfortunately, it doesn't actually color, uh, carry over color themes at the moment, which is a bit of a downside. Um, but in saying that, that's why I think the Q and A is uh, should be utilized in isolation within your dashboards. And and by going through these next few examples, I hope you're going to see uh, that you know, there, there are insights that you can find that you might not readily have ava available to you in the report section. Okay, spend enough time just uh, reviewing that. Let's actually dive into a few examples. So, first of all, uh, the Q and A can go and look at you know, any report uh, that you have a link to. So, anything you put into the dashboard. So, all I've done is, in this case, this blank thing here. This this is just this is just uh, connecting this dashboard to the February um, twenty eight learning summit. So, it's just a placeholder, basically. That's what that's what I've put it in there. Four. Okay, so you can do things like this, right? You can go show total sales. Uh, by say customer name, so we can we can write simple things like this, right, and very very quickly get answers. And now the key thing, the the a thing to note, right, is and I actually hear this quite often, is that uh, the Q and A doesn't work with measures that are in measure tables. Well, to be honest, this is completely wrong, and I have no idea why people say this. Uh, Q and A, from my extensive testing, has always has, has worked with. Might not have right at the beginning, but it currently has for quite some time now. Worked with measure tables, and you should never move away from using measure tables. In my view, they are absolutely essential in your Power BI models. And you'll see here, I've just typed in total sales by customer name. You'll see here that it just picked up total sales, which was in my key measures table, uh, my my key measures group, and 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 it's worked absolutely fine. So. Uh, if, if you ever hear that written anywhere or you hear that someone say that, you can just call them out and say it's, it's not actually true. Measure groups are essential. 
So we can get simple things like this, but you know we can go even further, right? We can go and and watch watch this right hand side when I actually do this, because what I can do is I can actually add way more other measures. I can create any visualization. Basically, all I've got to do is write it out uh, and write it out in an intuitive way. So I'm going to show show total sales by our uh, total sales and total profits by city name in this case. And you'll see here that it hasn't actually created the visualization, but uh, all I've got to do is uh, make a selection like that. And you've always got to use them in combination. I always say that there's nothing wrong with using this in combination with um, uh, with 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 the field panes on the, on the right hand side. You know, we can get to the visualization that we want, and that's a great thing. And what's interesting to note, and and why this is useful, is that this visualization I didn't even have this in the report, right? And so if a consumer actually wanted to see this inside, well, this is how they can find it. They don't need to be able to um, get you to go into the report and change it around. You can actually just create it for them in the Q&A as simply, uh, as simply as this. Now, I want to show you that you can get incredibly advanced in the Q&A, right? Incredibly advanced. And I'm going to show you in an example um, based on what I uh, showcased during the Learning Summit. So in the Learning Summit, we had a uh, quite a complex, I went through quite a complex example of a customer segmentation. And the formulas that go into this are quite advanced. So as you can see here, you know, I won't run through it, but this is a, this is an advanced formula. I mean, this is this is sort of getting up there in terms of advanced DAX, etc. But check out, we can actually call these formulas inside inside of the Q&A and pull up visualizations exactly like we have inside of our Power BI reports. Um, uh, even with these really advanced formulas, the internal engine inside of Power BI Online, you've got to remember this is web-based, is actually going through and doing these calculations based on DAX. It's absolutely incredible. So what I can do here is I can go show um, profits by custom grouping. So this is the name of the measure. So I've named all my measures quite um, uh, quite effectively, right? So profits, actually I can type that out, right? Profits by custom grouping versus margins by custom grouping um, per customer as scatter charts with legend customer grouping. So as I was typing that out, I see here that it hasn't actually uh, created it exactly. And so I just got to keep typing around and, and playing with it and making making sure that it actually, well, this is why it's not playing because I've, I've typed it in wrong here, unfortunately. So this is actually custom grouping. So let's see if that fixes that. Okay, so that's worked better. And then I've typed in this wrong as well. So you'll see here that I just sort of play around, right? I play around. Um, you can see that it wasn't actually picking on the on the right hand side. It wasn't actually picking up the correct uh, the correct elements or, or correct filters and, and measures, etc. Because I was uh, typing them in wrong. But when I type them in right, all of this, right? This is this is basically reflecting that really intensive calculation of customer segmentation. Well, I was able to recreate it. Um, just by referencing the measures and the correct filters inside of, in, inside of Q&A. It's amazing, right? And you'll see here that it's gone and picked up um, on the right-hand side here. It's picked up the segmentation, uh, segmentation formulas, done it all virtually. Incredible stuff. Okay, so that's another example. And so this is this is really showcasing how far you can take it. Now, uh, I'll show you, I want to show you other thing, how, how you can uh, create uh, or get information really quickly, right? Really quickly that um, you know, also might not be in your report and you might want to be able to sort of download it or, or get it into get in, into a format that you can showcase on a big screen or something like that. So I can go and say something like show as table, um, show, I go show in, in a table, total sales, total profits, total uh, profit, profit margins per customer in year 2017. And that hasn't worked out, so I need to go uh, where, actually I need to go where year is 2017, I believe. That's right. Okay. So, uh, so what? So, so total sales, total profits. I need to turn it to total profits per customer. Great. Okay. So it's added another element in there that I probably don't need. So I can actually come along there and, and exit out. But if, if you have a look at that, check this out. 
we were able to very quickly get this in into a table, and we could um, we could we can we can change the sorting of it, etc. etc. So interestingly enough, this actually again was not in my um, in my report. I didn't put it in my in my report that uh, I spent a lot of time creating. And so on the fly, you could be in a meeting and you could re you could generate you could generate this sort of insight in Q and A. You could say pin it to your um, pin it to your dashboard. And, and then you're away. You've got another insight that you can uh, always quickly go and back and refer to. It's in your dashboard. And it just might be insights like this that just don't exist inside of uh, your uh, in, of your current reports. And again, so the measures were just very neatly um, you know, organized across all my different uh, measure groups. And I was able to just call upon them and you know, put them into any visualization that I wanted, basically. Now. You will run into a few times where it might not work out exactly how you think. Uh, or, uh, you know, in terms of the visualization you're getting, there might be wrong filters placed on, you know, especially around dates, etc. But, um, but all I would say is that I wouldn't be too worried about it. If you've set up your model well, you can easily go and um, use in combination, you know, all the different um, uh, you know, uh, selections you can make on the right hand side, bring them in, change them around. So you can always get to the result, right? You can always get to it. And um, you know, it's just a matter of sort of trial and error. But you know, honestly, it's it's gotten very, you know, it's very, very effective the Q and A, right? And I can really see applications for it now. Where in the past, maybe not so much. But this is this is really sort of for ad hoc analysis, being able to reach back into very unique and specific things um, that uh, that you might not have in your reports, and you can throw them on a dashboard, and then they're going to be in your meeting. They're going to be there in a way that you can reference down the track. And you know, the future, I believe, is very, very exciting. I feel like the Q and A is going. I, I truly believe the Q and A uh, and uh, is going to be able to be called via Cortana, so voice activated. And I also feel that this could be integrated into a lot of the, the Microsoft tools, uh, especially Outlook. And, you know, the just being able to imagine writing an email, needing to grab an insight, being able to type it into a say a Q and A formula, uh, Q and A bar, um, question bar like this. You know, and, and being able to retrieve an answer. Like I, I just don't feel like there's anything stopping this ask a question of your data, you know, being placed anywhere. You know, it's everything's cloud. It could basically just go anywhere on any cloud um, Office 365 um, tool, right? So it's very, very exciting what is um, you know, what, it, what what is possible there. Okay, so this has gone on quite a long time, but I did want to cover a bit because I missed it in the uh, learning summit, and it's so exciting what can be achieved in there. I mean, I'm just a huge, huge fan of Q&A. If you use it effectively, if you build your models well, there's just uh, you know exponential potential on on how it could be utilized effectively within within your organization. Okay, all the best. Um, you know, look forward to your hearing uh, hearing your comments below. What what do you think? How you're using it? So on and so forth. Um, you know, that, that'd be really great. So certainly, if you like the content, throw us a like on the video. Really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to uh, Enterprise DNA TV. Plenty of new content coming out. Some um, have have a lot of exciting stuff uh, that I have planned for the near future. So so certainly worth um, uh, subscribing so you can get hold of it. Uh, I'll also leave a link to a, a registration page for for the summer. I know it's been, but if you do want to sort of uh, watch the recordings, I will make those available. Um, all you have to do is uh, put uh, put in a registration. Okay, all the best. Take care. Talk to you soon.